This is Guggen Squad Flat Banger. It's about two and a half inches, runs three to six feet, so it would be a shallow to medium diver. And I'm pretty sure without looking that it's, uh, it's a half ounce. Getting into the box might be the most challenging issue I have all day with this. Yeah, this is, um, <sighs> well, hey, right on the back there. Visit catchco.com. Guggen. Ah, because it's got this little happy seal on the side of it. That would be smarter than the box, Jen. So good morning, fish heads. Welcome to the show. Today, I'm going to attempt to get a lure out of a box and uh, make it look cool. It already looks cool. These are neat little baits. I've seen a few flat sides before. Um, this runs really well. It is a fish catcher, and even if I didn't touch it, it would be a fish catcher. It's got the traditional Guggen Squad eyes. We're going to tape those over. I'm going to do that off camera. It's just masking tape and this here exacto knife. That's not going to be a hard thing. These little guys, I know, Jacob, you don't like putting those things on the side because they're probably a pain in the butt, but they're super reflective, and I'm certain that we can use that to our benefit in the pattern today. So I'm going to unrig this, take all the rings and the hooks and all that stuff off. I'm going to mask this, this eye here, and I'm going to mask the bill. And when we come back, we're going to make something killer. So there's a couple of ways that I want to go with this. I can either, it's going to be one of two things, I think. I can either do a crawl and show you, let me walk you guys around and show you what I'm thinking about doing here with this. Kind of give you a walk around on how I pull something like that off that really looks like those those things are coming off of the bait where there's a lot of shading and shadowing. Of course, that's going to be a mesh pattern. You guys are used to seeing me do a lot of mesh on my channel. So my other train of thought was that because it's a Guggen Squad bait and they have so much footage, um, the pattern that comes to mind is probably a couple of years old and it is one of John B's on his Amazon trip. He caught a Jacunda. And it's a really cool fish. Um, I think it was the first one that he'd ever caught. So I've pretty much decided that since I do mesh all the time, and you guys see bait after bait after bait that's meshed, I'm going to turn this into John B's Jacunda catch from the Amazon roughly two years ago. It was a trip that he took with Scott and Alex Perrick. It's a cool, if you guys haven't seen it, go watch it because it's a really cool as frustrating as the series is, it was a really interesting experience for them to have gone through and all the, all the things that come with being on a trip somewhere you haven't been before, um, good and bad. So it's worth a watch. It's, I think it's like eight or nine episodes. But that's what I think I'm going to be doing today is, um, is John's Chikunda. Now, anytime you're going to need a stencil, and for this pattern we are because there are some splotches so I think that the Jacunda is a, a cousin to the peacock bass or arowanas or one of those fish. I'm actually going to have to look it up. I guess we'll have to do some, uh, some factoids on this. But anytime you're making a stencil, you want to make sure that you're making it within the parameters of the bait. You always do that first. And you guys know, at least if you've been hanging out on the channel for a while, you know that I will make a stencil out of just about anything what I really like to use because it's the perfect width. Um, thin enough but strong enough to hold it. Um, these little hook backing papers. This little piece of cardboard that comes in. Various different, uh, VMC, most of the, most of the hook companies that you, in small quantities have them. So I'm going to go ahead and probably just do it a little bit bigger than the actual bait itself because I need a little bit of rim to work with. 
And that is the basic shape of this stencil and this bait. What I'm doing is I'm kind of eyeballing this here to get an idea of where this gill plate comes because we're going to use that to our advantage. So I'm just kind of working from the nose back and coming down and I'm just going to put a little dot in here because that is where we're going to be able to start our little splotches of how this thing looks. And they're beautiful fish. Um, the faded part of what he caught still had some really good iridescence in it. So we're going to do our best to give it a little justice and paint this up real good. Love doing species that you guys don't always necessarily get a chance to see. So all I'm doing here is just cutting out the splotches. And they do have splotches similar to the peacock bass. Like I said, they're cousins. Um, but in this particular species, it's got several. So I'm going to put in six or seven, however many I can comfortably fit that doesn't look like it's all jammed in because this is only two and a half inches. So I'm going to be a little bit restricted. If this were going on a jerk bait, probably be able to make it look a little bit more like it would in the wild because they are fairly thin, long fish. But long is a relative term because really I think most of the species of Jacunda or Jacunda only get about 12 to 14 inches long. So they're not huge. I don't think they get 10, 12 pounds like most of the three bar and spotted peacocks that you guys see. But that will be for a little bit later. And then of course there's going to be a series of black dots on the face as well. And we're going to be using transparent paint. So the only thing that I'm going to come over with on, on white is going to be this and the belly. Got some white loaded in the chamber and I'm just going to cover that real lightly. Just so we have a fresh palette to work with. I've got white on the top and the bottom for that clean palette that we're going to be working with. And if you notice in the picture, which you guys are going to see at this point throughout the rest of the video, the one that he caught in the vid was a little bit lighter. Like I said, I think it was probably stressed out. Um, but the, the colors that we're going to be working with today, I'm going to start with just a little bit of a fluorescent. I'm going to do an olive, olive drab, real faded out. And where's the yellow I want to work with? Probably just hit some fluorescent. So we'll go light to dark and run this yellow first. And we always work in light to dark. We're going to have a minimal palette on this. We have a fluorescent yellow. And these colors will be muted over just a little bit with some of this opaque pearlescence after the fact. And I want to turn my pressure way down and just run from light to dark like I always tell you guys to do. Just real easy. And we are going to cover these, but you'll still be able to see them. Just give a real light yellow across the midsection of this. All right. And come back with just a little bit of fluorescent red. And the bellies are red on these. Fairly faded. And we can always come back over with a little bit of a pearl white. kind of mute that down just a little more. And then leaving the red in the chamber, I'm just going to come back and do some olive drab green, which is a wicked mixture. It's an apple green with gray, brown, and a little bit of um, olive, actual olive color in there from an ink. 
and then just come over the top real light don't need that much at all because you want it to kind of blend into that yellow and with that going to come over the top with just a little bit of moss green very lightly running this pressure around 12 just to kind of give a little bit of definition to the head right around the eye and we got a pretty decent blend going on here so I grabbed just a little bit of FW ink it's a pearl silver and we're just going to come back on this belly and give it just a little bit of a lighter appearance there we go I'm going to lay this down on its side on these helping hands here and now we're ready to put on these black splotches we're not quite I want to do a little bit of detail on this because it is a detailed fish I'm going to bring the pressure down I'm going to run this right around 10 grab the stencil that we've made add some jet black some wicked detail jet black don't need a whole lot of it grab a scrap piece of paper make sure we have a decent flow it'll work for what we've got going on here now we're just going to line this up to the back of the bait I did heat set all this off camera so the paint underneath the stencil is relatively dry and I think probably for ease of doing this and keeping you guys in frame I'm gonna go ahead and do it like this that way you guys can see where I'm lining this up right behind that gill plate which was remember we did that on on purpose and I'm going to lean this against here just so you can see how it's going to set up and just a real easy spray and drop that off on this other side we're going to go ahead and do the same thing just line it up we've already heat set the other side off camera we want to make sure this is not too low or too high we want to try and drop this down right in the middle and we want to bring it right off of the gill plate fairly low pressure and there we go while I still have black in the chamber one of the things I'm going to do is take this little dot stencil from Brian Best at Anarchy Models UK and just kind of thread the edge of this gill plate with some smaller dots and then the rest of this stuff is pretty much going to be hand detailed make sure you guys stay in frame here with me Yeah, that looks pretty decent. I also want to come and do the back of this just to give it a little bit of definition. So we'll just drop some of these down. The key when you're doing stuff like this is to leave this alone, not move it side to side. So if you need to bring your finger underneath here and grip as you lay this down, feel free to do so. And now, hopefully the camera is picking that up. We've got some really nice little definition pieces on the gill plate and on the top back of this. Just like anything else in this type of work, hand detailing can be a little bit tricky 
But this is your pattern. Make it your own. Doesn't have to be exactly like mine. Doesn't have to look exactly like this fish right here, which is a random picture that I kind of pulled out of the air. But this does give a really good definition of all of the dots in the bottom. And we can also expand a little bit on just these standard stenciled cutouts that we did. So we'll trick it out just a little bit. And you'll also notice, and I left the gill plate alone, just at the edge of this gill plate right here, we have that traditional red splotch that is a key identifying feature for the Jacunda. So I am going to add that in, and I am going to do that after I do everything else because it looks like it's dropped right on to this on top of all of the dots. So we're going to add the dots in and then I'm going to come back and add the red and black splotch just to the edge of this gill plate right here. But in the meantime, I've got an artist detailing brush. It's a double zero and I've trimmed that down with a pair of scissors even more. And I'm going to add just a couple of detailed dots into the face around the gill plate, just like three or four. If it'll, there we go. Have to get load enough paint in order to pull that off. Now we're just going to start adding in. And you can kind of go at random. And it seems to be just kind of in a line with the rest of the splotches here but not all the way to the belly. So we're just going to add in a, about a quarter inch stripe of hand painted dots here. Reload this. Now one thing you'll notice if you pull that up just a little bit here is that these are not completely square. It looks like they have been kind of blown out a little bit so we can modify how this looks. In this stencil I've cut two more small holes that are going to represent this red part here. And because we're going to drop color onto color that exists already, especially there's some black in here, I'm going to use a white mask to start out with. There we go. I'm going to heat set this mask here. Grab some transparent red. Now that we're dry, we can come right back over with this stencil and remask. Just put your hand down where that's going to go. Spray in your red. Just gently lift that off of there. Make sure this is dry. Grab the other side. I'll pull this off the cradle here. And just work our way around this. Now we have our gill plate piece. Maybe just add in a little bit more detail and then we're going to hit this with some opaque pearlescence. I'm going to run just a couple of light dots above this as well. Got a little bit of this Com Art loaded into the chamber. I'm just going to finish this bait off. Give it that nice pearl sheen. Lighten the belly up just a little bit. 
mute down this black. There we go. Run all of this out. It's a real light coat, so it's not going to hurt anything. Maybe just a wee bit more on the belly, only because this particular picture has got a really light stomach area. Bring that up the sides a bit, get a quick heat set and we're good to go. Before we pull the tape off the eyes here is I want to give a little bit of definition I've got some detailed black magenta here in my chamber and I've cut just a little tiny piece of stencil to line up with this gill plate. Make sure I've got a good flow. That's probably coming out too hot. So I'll bring the pressure down. Make sure we still have good flow. And remember when you guys are running against the stencil, you always want to hit your stencil heavier than you're hitting the uh, bait below it. Just give that little bit of definition. It's going to make all the difference in the world. Now you've got not only your pattern, but it looks a little bit more 3D as well flip that over and do the same thing on the other side. You make, make sure you're wiping that down. And just grab both sides. And just work that on around. Grab the top of this real quick. Now you've got some definition to it. If you want to get super fancy, you can even do the top of the eye because there's a lot of depth to this bait, the way they've pressed it. There's a whole lot going on here. So you can just kind of cover the eye and work your way around and get a little bit more definition there as well. I mean, you can super trick this out. You can do it pretty much sky's the limit when you have baits that have this much depth in their gill plate. It's a lot of fun to do. And that, ladies and gentlemen, fish heads, is your Guggen flat banger. Two and a half inches long, half of an ounce heavy. Really had fun doing this pattern. I like doing out of the box stuff. And you guys have seen me do tons of crawls on this channel. So something a little bit different, something that's real fun to goof around with and play around with. This is John B's Jacunda from a couple of years ago on his Amazon experience. That video of him catching the fish is on the last shot. I'm going to link that video in the description below. Thank you for hanging out with me on the channel today. I hope I was able to teach you guys a couple of things. I'll see you on the next video. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.